Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we'll look at symmetry tools to help solve AMC problems more efficiently. The description section will link to a more complete review of useful symmetry tools along with additional example problems. So let's look at our example from a recent AMC 10. What is the area of the region enclosed by the graph of the equation x squared plus y squared equals absolute x plus absolute y? Now I notice that the equation looks like the form of a circle but the absolute value signs make it difficult to graph because they effectively flip the sign of the x and the y variables depending on the coordinate quadrant you happen to be in. So we'll need to look for any available symmetry to help simplify our work. Now reflection symmetry about the axes is probably the easiest to look for so let's do that first. So let's try to substitute x for minus x in our equation and see how that affects the equation. And we notice that when we make this substitution, the x squared is unchanged and also the absolute x is unchanged. So essentially the entire equation is unchanged by this variable substitution. And what that means is that the graph of this equation is symmetric about the y-axis. We can do a similar test for reflection symmetry about the x-axis by substituting y for minus y. And by the same reasoning, we notice that this equation is unchanged by this variable substitution from which we conclude that the graph of the equation is also symmetric about the x-axis. Now it turns out we can test for two more symmetries and uh, that could be helpful in some cases but it looks like we have enough symmetry now that we've identified to really help this problem along because since we have reflection symmetry above, about both axes, what that means is that uh, we can analyze this equation in any quadrant and use these two reflection symmetries to complete the graph for the other quadrants. And that really helps simplify this problem enormously because now we can choose the quadrant where this equation is the most easy to analyze. And for my money, quadrant number one is probably the easiest because both x and y are positive numbers, which means that the absolute values of x and y just reduce to x and y. So let's go ahead and do that. So in quadrant one and quadrant one only, we can reduce this equation to x squared plus y squared is equal to x plus y. And now that does look like the equation for a circle. So let's move the x and y to one side. It's equal to zero. And we can complete the square in the normal fashion. So we take one half of this uh, coefficient and square it and add it. One half of this coefficient, square it and add it. And then add the sum to the other side. And we can now factor these two sets of terms. And we can uh, try to write this in terms of a square to find that we now have in a circle of radius 1 over root 2 centered at the coordinates 1 half, 1 half. So that seems pretty easy to draw now, so let's go ahead and try to do that. So we have the center point of 1 half, 1 half. And we want to draw a circle of radius 1 over root 2. So that looks like a radius that just barely touches the origin. So let's draw a circle of this radius about 1 half, 1 half. And that should look something like this. That's about right. Now, you have to be careful about the portion of the circle that lies outside of quadrant one because it doesn't satisfy our simplifying assumptions, so it's probably not valid. Now, having drawn this portion in quadrant one, we can now reflect this portion about the y-axis and then both of these sets about the x-axis to complete the graph. And the complete graph will probably look something like this. That's about right. 
And from here, it's pretty easy to complete this problem now because we see that we can reduce this entire area to something that looks like a diagonal square of side length root 2 plus two, or I'm sorry, four semicircles of radius one over root two. So it looks like we have a square plus two complete circles, and the square has side root two, so the area of the square is two times two times pi times the radius square of the circle, and the radius square is one half, and so that's equal to two plus pi. And that's our final answer, and that's choice B. So, a fairly simple problem if you use reflection symmetry, and just about impossible if you don't. So, please check out the description for more symmetry tips and examples, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.